So I just got through being emotional because I was just thinking about how um, in the Bible, uh, this uh, one of the servants of God said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I'm not reading it. I'm This is coming off my head. I just concentrate by keeping my eyes down. So I don't want you to think I'm like reading and misquoting. But anyway, um, that's, that's the Kiwana translation, right? <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking about the valley of the shadows. A lot of times we are going through a valley of shadows and we don't realize it. You know, when we have our pity, pity parties, we're going through a valley of the shadows, the shadows of depression, the shadows of anger, the shadows of resentment. These shadows, they have names and we have given them names. And they are set out to put thoughts in our heads that identify who they are and what their assignment is in our lives, in our pity parties, in the seasons that of valleys that we are in. And so it's just really, really dawned on me that scripture just came alive to me. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows the shadows of death. And so to me, the assignment of the the assignment of those shadows is basically to steal from us our lives, to kill us and to destroy us. That is why the servant described it as the valley of the shadows of death. And the reason why I think he, you know, described it as, you know, those demonic entities or negative energies, he described them as shadows, you know, I think it's because shadows are non-threatening or, I mean, they, they have, their only ability is to influence us so that we can decide whether we're going to be scared <laughs> or whether we're going to fight or flight. If we, you know, um, it, it's to deceive the shadows uh, are there to deceive us into thinking that it, they have more power than they really do have. So they look as scary as they can look. They sound as scary as they can sound. They speak scary thoughts into your head that give you fear, scary thoughts into your head that give you anxiety. And if you are moved by those scary thoughts and the scary things that you see, then you can be moving yourself into a self-sabotage situation. And I just think about, um, like, you know how they show videos of babies running from their shadows. Now, if their parents wasn't watching them, don't you think one of them babies would accidentally like run into the street and get hit by a car, you know, or something traumatic like that, you know? And I just think that a lot of times us as baby Christians, you know, thank God for, you know, monitoring us for watching over us, for giving his angels charge to lift us up in their arms so that our feet shall not hit against stones. Thank God for protecting fools and babies, because I think that those shadows of fear and anxiety amongst other shadows that we're dealing with addiction, just, just, um, so many things in life that threaten us, you know, a lot of times we are just like those babies 
being afraid of our own shadow and running into the street or being afraid of someone else's shadow and running into the street. Even if like somebody was to come up and threaten you, um, they're, they're presenting themselves to you like they got power to cause you harm and they really do not unless you give them that power. And we've all heard it before. You know, nobody has the power to hurt you unless you give them the power. And a lot of times that's, you know, sounds like a cliche because there are plenty of times people had the ability to hurt us and we don't understand how we gave them that power, you know? And the, re and the thing is, we don't understand. We give the power to them by allowing their threats to move us in a, in a way that we would not have moved if they never said what they said in the first place. So if you can think of some shadows like fear, depression, anxiety, resentment, uh, unforgiveness, those, those, those shadows live in the valleys that sometimes we have to walk through. And what the servant of God was saying that even though we walk through these valleys of the shadow of death, God is always with us. He always, you know, is, is guiding us, teaching us in the ways that we shall go and counseling us with his loving eye on us. He's always doing that. That's what he's talking about, his rod and his staff. That's his grace and his mercy. His rod and his staff is also, you know, the married couple of God's um, uh, wisdom and knowledge, his discernment, his his rebuke. You know, it's 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 guiding us. God is guiding us with his rod and his staff and teaching us and counseling us through these valleys of these shadows of death. And the only reason why we're allowed to walk through these valleys is because he knows that there is value in these valleys. He said, you know, one of God's servants said to him one time, he kept begging him to take the thorn from his flesh or these thorns from his flesh and Instead of God saying, okay, and taking it, God instead says, um, my grace is sufficient for you, right? Just like in the Bible, there's a scripture that said something about be angry and sin not. That reminds me, you know, because you could be asking God, Lord, please help me not to be angry anymore, which is another shadow that can't hurt you unless you give it power. Um God, please don't let me be angry anymore. And God, God doesn't say, okay, I'll take the anger away. Right. And you're like, oh man, God, you know, I thought you was there for a sister or a brother. You know what I'm saying? Cause you think you ask God for something, you shall receive it. Like the Bible says, but the problem is we never get to receive the way we think we're going to receive the answer that God has for us. Never. So instead of taking away our anger, our anger, he allows us to anger, but gives us a command to be angry and sin not. Now, how do we do that? Well, just like his servant that asked him to take this uh, thorn from my flesh, um, God answered him by saying, my grace is sufficient for you. And God tells him that his uh, strength is made perfect in his weaknesses. So like, why would God want to take away your weaknesses? If it is in your weaknesses, God's strength is made perfect. God's strength is made no matter what, but that doesn't mean it's going to be made perfect. And God doesn't want his, his strength being made perfect means that he needs to deliver us in a way that we don't get to be prideful that we don't get to start thinking we did that. We are already going through, you know, um life a lot of I would a lot of times we're going through life thinking that I got this job. I deserve a raise. I deserve, you know, this because I do this and do that until something happens to you and then you get mad at God like 
dude, you, if you thought you did it in the first place, why are you mad at God when you can't do it no more? <laughs> you know? And so as children of God, a lot of times he allows, um, the, the messages of Satan to buffet us so that, you know, in our weaknesses, his strength will be made perfect. And we will not be able to brag or boast in ourselves and our flesh and our self-righteousness, but we'll be able to brag and boast in the, the, the grace of God, the righteousness of God, the power of God that's being made perfect, even in our weaknesses, you know? And so also like um, Jesus, he experienced those shadows and I was just thinking about it and I just got so emotional because um, I didn't realize, I thought Jesus being perfect meant that he didn't, he was never angry. Um, apparently he was angry, but because of the, the, the power of God being made perfect in his weakness, he was able to be angry and sin not. I was like, wow, like, it just dawned on me. I'm like, when the Holy Spirit is ready to give you revelation, it is just such a blessing. I'm telling you. I was like, wow. So we don't understand really what sin is. This is why we walk around as Christians feeling saved one minute and feeling unsaved the next. Because every time we feel or experience an encounter with a shadow in our valleys of darkness, like we think that we're sinning and we don't understand what sin is, you know, and sin is something that it's basically a law. Sin is a law that we put ourselves under or allow God to deliver us from. And God, the only way God can deliver us from the law of sin is if we welcome, welcome, welcome the law of righteousness that can only come by faith if we believe it's the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And we can only have that by faith. And if we are able to welcome it by faith and accept Jesus in our hearts and welcome him, then yeah, like we can be, then we're not under the law of sin anymore. So we think that if we're angry, we sinned. Every shadow that comes to whisper in our minds, jealousy. What about the shadow of, of jealous, jealousy? That is a shadow of darkness also that came to kill, steal, and destroy your peace, your understanding. You know, God says, my people die from a lack of knowledge. It wants to still kill and destroy any type of knowledge you got, any type of discernment you got, any, you know, any type of love and grace and peace and mercy and kindness. Uh, if jealousy, oh, it's just, it comes to still kill and destroy. You hear me? It's a shadow. It cannot hurt you and it cannot hurt the people that you love unless you give it power by not welcoming the righteousness of God or the strength of God or the grace of God to be made perfect in your weaknesses. So God is like, I'm not going to take that jealousy from you. Be jealous and sin not. So you can be jealous and sin not. So imagine that Jesus came down on earth to experience everything that we've experienced and take on our sins on his body. Imagine that Jesus was angry, but sin not. Imagine that Jesus was jealous, but sin not. Imagine that Jesus felt the same feelings that we have, that we allow the enemy and those shadows to condemn us with just because we feel those things or we be those things in our flesh. That doesn't mean that we be those things in our spirit. Our spirit be righteous. But, you know, in our flesh, we be jealous. In our flesh, we be angry. God said, be jealous and sin not. Be angry and sin not. Jesus came in the flesh. So whatever our flesh be, Jesus' flesh be, but he sinned not. Therefore, he was perfect. So even in our weaknesses, we 
are considered to be perfect because God's strength is being made perfect in our weaknesses. God's holiness is being fulfilled in our weaknesses. God's righteousness is being fulfilled in our weaknesses. God's law is being fulfilled in our weaknesses. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. You can be something and sin not. You can be angry and sin not. You can be resentful and sin not. You can be jealous and sin not. That means I don't have to be guilty anymore. So yeah, I think I'm going to come to a screeching halt on that message. It was just a blessing just sitting here listening to the Holy Spirit just reveal things to me. I love it. I love having a close and personal relationship with God. So I'm just going to pray right now. I will hope that if anyone is watching that you'll be able to touch and agree with me. Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord God for just loving us so much. Thank you for giving us spiritual wisdom and understanding. And if we lack, Lord God, we ask you that we shall receive. We seek and we shall find. We knock knock, and the door shall be open and you shall give unto us generously wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment. You will give it to us generously, Lord Father God, and call us friend and call us your children and call us your holiness and call us your righteousness. I thank you that your strength shall be made perfect in our weaknesses today and every day that we will be able to boast and and look and see what you have done, Lord God, and not boast in our flesh, Lord God, not even be tempted to boast in our flesh because we done dealt with so many shadows, Lord God, you know, it, it, it is really hard for us to, you know, think that we can you know, be sinless without your, uh, without your grace, Lord God. And so I thank you that we are considered sinless. I thank you for your righteousness, for giving us your righteousness on credit, Lord Father God, like you did Abraham, for giving us your righteousness in Christ Jesus, all because we ask and we believe that we receive in Jesus name, what we ask for. You said, ask and believe that you will receive. And so we're asking, Lord God, and if there's any unbelief, Lord God, we we ask that you help us with our unbelief, that we may receive all that you have for us, all the righteousness that you have for us, all the holiness that you have for us, all the power that you have for us, all the righteousness and holiness and power that you desire Live and act in us, through us, and around us, and in all our relationships, Lord God, so that you can get your glory out of our lives. You're a merciful God and a loving God, and your mercy and your love covers a multitude of sins, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' name for just uh, rescuing us from our filthy rags of self-righteousness, Lord God, and teaching us how to gain an understanding of your righteousness so that we can receive Lord God and come out from among our own righteousness and the righteousness of others that we can receive, oh God, and let go and let you and resist the devil and draw near to you and resist the devil that he shall flee. Lord God, we think that resisting the devil means that we have to run from these shadows. No, it means that we can be but sin not. So Lord God, by your grace, we ask that you give us ears that hear, Lord God, so that we can hear your voice and obey and walk in your precepts by your power made perfect in our weakness. However you're going to do it, Lord, we ask that you do it. In Jesus' name, we surrender as many times as it takes for us to surrender completely and totally. Amen. Thank you for praying with me if there was anyone that did. And um, I love you in Jesus' name and have a blessed day.